Hey y'all, and welcome to another episode of Soul Food Sundays. Um, I hope this message finds you all well as I am recording. It is the night of the full moon in Taurus, uh, which also happens to be a lunar eclipse. So I decided to go ahead and um, record Soul Food Sundays a little bit early so that I could get it uploaded and out to you guys on Sunday because I've committed to a community service endeavor on Sunday to feed um, 300 families uh, a vegan meal. A friend of mine, uh, Eden Ashe, um, also known to me as my lane, and her associates, they are putting together this wonderful um, initiative, and I absolutely wanted to um, lend my time and support. And so I will be part of the team that will be helping to serve and therefore uh, kind of tied up on Sundays. Um, so I didn't want to miss out on be a being able to get a message out to you all. So I hope that you all are taking advantage of this um, full moon in Taurus energy uh, as you know, the energies of the moons uh, have shadow periods, so the energy actually ushers in uh, two to three days prior to the actual date of that full moon or that new moon. And in this case, if this energy going forth is going to be anything like what I have experienced in the past few days, this is going to be an emotional one. And it's also going to be one that reveals darkness in our lives, be it in our personal life or on a grand scale. Um, if you are a rap music, hip hop music um, fan or connoisseur, uh, then you are familiar with Young Dolph and his passing here recently. Uh, Dolph was a schoolmate of mine. Um, I met him in 10th grade. Um, and we really didn't have a relationship, but I knew him in passing. We definitely had those times where we would speak and, you know, make eye contact, keep it moving. But I was extremely proud of him coming from where he has uh, come from and learning his story. And so I was deeply hurt to find that he had been murdered. And as a Memphian, I am a Memphian through and through. I could just feel the dark cloud over the city. And I actually live on the outskirts of the city, but I mean, it's really the same thing. It's not much of a, um, of a difference. And I am just crawling out of the funk that I was in because God has shown me some things. He has revealed some darkness about that situation to me that I'm not going to share at this moment because I am mindful and sensitive to the timing. He just passed. People are grieving. But at some point, I'm going to speak on it. I am. I really am. Uh, what I will say is, God, I had a dream about Dolph a year ago in 2020, in January of 2020 that in hindsight really prophesied some elements of what happened that have not been revealed to the masses, so to speak. But everything in my intuition is telling me exactly what that was about. And like I said, at some point, I will share with the collective. But right now, I just want to um, say that my prayers and... Uh, the love and light that I have to lend goes out to his family, his friends, and the whole paper route camp. There's so many of those guys I know personally because we went to school together. One thing about Dolph, he put a lot of the homies from the hood on payroll and uh, took him on the road, took them on the road with him, and he just put a lot of them in positions to get out of that environment. And so, it's just a heartbreaking um, situation. 
I struggled with looking at myself um, day before yesterday. Was the day before yesterday or yesterday? I'm so tired, y'all. I don't even know what day that was that I was just, I was pathetic. <laughs> and if this energy is symbolic of that energy that I felt and the, the what occurred, buckle up. Get grounded. Taurus is a sign that is very much about grounding. It's an earth sign. Get grounded so that no matter what happens, you are centered. Even if the, the winds and the turbulence of the storm, as we've discussed in one of these readings, uh, that uh, I did. Now I'm going to have to go back and watch them and put a card on the screen to figure out which one of those readings it was that talked about being in the eye of the storm. Because this is it. The energy that we are feeling and that is coming in, because I got a feeling it ain't over. Again, we are in a universal five year. None of this should surprise us. There are such so many things about chaos and change and um, our personal freedoms and all the things that fives represent conflict. It's it's living itself out. We're seeing it and we're going into a universal six year with 2022, which we will discuss. I may do a co-creating episode on it, um, talking about numerology. Uh, but yeah, it's real out here, y'all. But without further ado, I'm going to bring forth a full moon in Taurus reading so that um, we can better understand these energies. And I have been drawn to use the, uh, the secret language of light transmission for your soul cards because in this time of an eclipse eclipses are all about the darkness prevailing that's the moon eclipsing the sun if i'm not mistaken and so the darkness prevails and we're needing to embrace that darkness and also maintain our light and so we're going to use the secret language of light cards to look into the energy and also the archetype cards by uh, Carolyn Miss because I'm interested in knowing what archetypes are going to be prevalent uh, within this energy as well. So we're going to get into prayer and then go into that reading. Oh, before I go into prayer, I will be figuring out some kind of way to add the information about the community service event uh, feeding 300 uh, families in case any of you want to volunteer your time to serve or prepare food or any of the several duties that they have available for you to volunteer your time or money by uh, providing a donation. If you know, like I know vegan food is not cheap. And, um, and so that would be a great way to give. And, um, or if you're needing to be one of those families that's receiving, uh, receiving a meal. I don't know what the protocol is for it, but I do have a flyer and some information. And so I'm going to make sure to share that with you all on the channel. So Father God, Mother Earth, ancestors and spirit guides, we come to you at this moment on the night of this full moon in Taurus to tell you thank you. Asking that your mercy and your grace cover us not only on this night, but whenever the individuals who are under the sound of my voice receive this message. I pray that your grace and mercy be sufficient now and then. We ask that God that you bring forth the best message for our highest good at this time. And we just give you thanks for all that you've done in each and every message that you have done up to this point. We pray that you continue to help us to maintain and brighten our light in these dark times, dear God, because we know there is a purpose and we just pray that we can walk in and stand strong in that purpose. Amen. So without further ado, I created this little sage blend and one thing about it, I don't care for is that it seems to go out really fast. It's yellow roses, blue lotus flowers, uh, sage. I think it's some lavender in there. It's really good for increasing intuition. And I've been using my charcoal um, briquettes. And unless I move it around a bit, it doesn't stay like 
it stays lit. The, the charcoal briquette stays lit, but I have to move the incense around it in order to get the smoke. And I want the smoke. You know what I'm saying? It's the whole point. So let's see here. Spirit, what message do you have for your people at this time as it relates to this full moon and time? What is that energy bringing in? Real quick. Man, let me tell you. So, today, I released a co-creating video maybe an hour or two ago. Uh, I recorded it days ago. And I just forgot to to uh, make it public. Uh, but it's about alignment. So, I put a card for that video in the um in the um on the video as well and it says you are the universe and you got on the alignment card a sword and it looks like two eagles bending toward the sword and then there is a heart that is lit up so that may very well be talking about some truth bringing two people into alignment with one another but whatever the, it is, it's speaking about communication and mental capacity as well as emotional. That symbolism There's also some stars. And whenever you see star symbology or if, the, if you're just outside and the stars are extra bright and calling to your attention, that is a sign to you to be hopeful, to have faith, to be optimistic. Here you have an angel standing over what looks like a castle or an estate and you have what looks like a man and a woman and there is a that man is pointing towards the angel up above and it says you are the universe which is number 29 equaling an 11 if this is about a relationship honey that's a twin flame card so we're needing, oh, number 14 being alignment, breaking down to a five. So there's been some conflict or chaos. We were just talking about fives. But there's a reconciliation involved. The more you become in alignment with the fact that you are the universe, that you are worthy, and that you are um, not only a child of God, but an embodiment of, embodiment of God, that you are created in God's energy, the more you tap into the fact that you are the universe, the more you get in alignment with partnership. Now, that partnership may not be romantic. It may be um, a professional relationship. It may be for a creative endeavor, but there's no coincidence that there are two eagles in this card and uh, two people in the image of this card. And I'm just curious to see what's on the top. 32, breaking down to another five, Divine Masculine. Now, we get another five card in this reading, honey. I know something, because I just saw 555 before I uh, sat down to do the reading. So, somebody's stepping into their Divine Masculine energy. That protector, that person who puts forth action, that logical, predominantly logical a being, but when you are a divine masculine, you are balanced. You have balanced masculine and feminine energy. So you have that image here with a lotus and a flame. The uh, the uh, silhouette of the flame is that of a heart. So this is a passionate uh, situation that is being birthed. You know, lotuses grow from the mud. Lotuses are the represent the beauty that comes from getting it out the mud, from being in tough situations. I'm not gonna read the um, commentary for that card. Yep, what I tell y'all, that sword represent some communication, some truth coming forward or coming out. Because at the bottom of the deck, number four, authentic truth. There's a truth that needs to be spoken. It might be from your mama, your daddy, your uncle, somebody stepping into their divine masculine energy to bring forth the truth. That is the message, but I'm going to read the comments here from the book anyway to see if we could just dive a little bit deeper. I told y'all it's an eclipse. Something that's been in the dark is going to be exposed to the light. Therefore, 
we're pulling from the secret language of light. Something's coming to the light. So let's see what number 14 alignment is telling us. Y'all make sure to check out co-creating on alignment. It was a really good message that came through and I was cute. Alignment, a covenant of mind, body, and spirit. Your soul is your biggest fan. It knows the truth of you and loves you unconditionally. It is continuously streaming this information to you. To tune in, your mind, body, and spirit must all agree in the now. Do this by meditating, focusing on your soul name, enjoying something you love, or having a nap. It's not up to your soul to zap you into alignment. Its job is to maintain your soul station so you have a frequency to tune into. The nature of physical life is to create and expand. Sometimes life experiences will pull you out of alignment so you can understand these experiences from a different angle. When you are out of alignment, you will automatically ask questions and want to create something different. Through this process, you gain clarity about your passions. Being out of alignment can feel awful. It's easy to blame a person or a situation when we feel bad, but instead of asking why something is happening, take a breath, return to neutral, and ask what you can create from the situation. And remember, your soul is a consistent, loving home you can return to always. The more you get to know yourself on a soul deep level, that space, that clear consciousness becomes home for you. It becomes such a comfortable, safe space to be in that one of the sole purposes of this journey is to get to that space so that no matter what's going on around you, that is the eye of the storm. That is home. That is where you want to return to when this 555 energy is kicking your ass. <laughs> that is your protection. When the world is just all over the place the energy of the world is all over the place when um white boys are getting off on murders uh in front of everybody with um high-powered rifles and getting no charges like old boy did today when that type of thing is going on it makes no sense you have a place to retreat to when you trust in God and the God in you. So each of these cards in the Secret Language of Light um, deck have what's called a Soul Mastery class, which gives you a meditation and some inspired reflections and actions that you can do. So it's kind of like homework for you to actually not just listen to me talk, but actually do some kind of practice that is in alignment with the message that's coming through. So this soul mastery class says that alignment, alignment is enlightenment. Place a hand on the card, gently close your eyes, and imagine the room is filling with light. So if you don't have this deck at home, you can skip that part about placing your hand on the card. But you want to close your eyes, imagine that the room is filling with light. Smoothly and easily, breathe in love from higher dimensions. Imagine moving higher into the light of love where you see your soul as a distant star. Now imagine you're looking through a telescope. Line up your view until you see your soul star in the middle of your sight and feel the sweet spot of alignment. Adjust and refocus until you hold an aligned position for at least 10 seconds. Breathe the feeling of being in alignment through your whole body. Allow unconditional love and complete fullness to flood your entire being as you experience soul harmony. You now have broader awareness of your soul and purpose. Float in this enlightenment for at least 30 seconds. When you feel ready, focus on the alignment within your physical body. 
open your eyes and smile. So it says enlightenment or alignment is when your thoughts, words, and actions are in harmony. Stuff got to line up. They got to be on the same level and on one accord. And that is where a lot of us go wrong because our intentions are, are, are to go one way and then our actions take us another way. And then our words take us uh, to the to the north. <laughs> and it's, we're just all over the place and our mind, body, and soul are not in alignment. And then we wonder why we cannot reach our goal, why we cannot manifest uh, what it is that we intentionally set out to manifest. It says, practice unconditional love. If you notice that someone is out of alignment, check that you are in alignment. Then sealing, send healing light from your heart to theirs and let go of any outcome. We have to let go of um, the outcome. That's been a very hard one lesson for me, but I got it. I'm on some come what may type ish. It's going to be what it's going to be and it is what it is. I cannot be attached to the outcome of situations because that is stressful. And that's just one of those things I don't have control over a lot of the time. And so I just implement the serenity prayer, bury that deep down in my heart when I find myself holding on to an outcome too hard. And then I let go. I release which tonight is a good time for releasing. So um, you'll still be under the energy of this full moon once this reading is uploaded. And I strongly suggest that you all write out whatever it is that you are needing to release and burn it, tear it up, do whatever you got to do to get rid of it as a manifestation of releasing that energy. It says, if you feel out, of alignment take a moment to realign and connect with your true self you may have to break a conversation to do this i find the most comfortable way is to tell others i'm going to the toilet show others the shift in you lead by example so basically what they're saying is if you need to take a break from something take that break step away from it so that you can make sure that you're good that you're in alignment and then you'll um hopefully be the afforded the opportunity to come back to it. But you have to lead by example. Teach people how to treat you. Show people how you are wanting to be seen in this world. Show people your authentic self, not just how you want to be seen, because sometimes that can lead to uh, wearing a mask. So the next card is number 29, which again breaks down to an 11, which is a master number. And it's reminding us that we are the universe. And that may be that very thing that stands in the darkness that is being brought to the light for us, because for many of us, we just don't know how worthy we are. So it says, know the self and know the nature of everything. You are you, and yet you are also the universe. Just like you, the universe is a living entity. It's not a thing or a person that knows everything. It is growing, moving, and reaching forward to experience life in new ways. Wherever or whenever you are, you will always recognize yourself and you will always exist. Play with the idea that the universe in all its manifestations peers out through you. It mingles and joins with your energy to see the world through your uniqueness and expands as you do. You are the pioneer of this universal frontier, and the universe needs you to know it in all forms. If you believe everything is separate, you'll want a guide, angel, light being, someone or something outside of you who sees you to show you the way. However, everything is as one and nothing is separate, so nothing is on the outside looking in. The universe sees wonderment through your eyes and you see wonderment in the universe. Become your own authority. Choose to feel good by discovering what makes you laugh, love, and enjoy. Focus on this and you will create similar manifestations and whatever you don't focus upon will fall away from lack of attention. One of the most important things that this card speaks of is oneness. The more we tap into the fact that we are one with the universe, that we are limitless beings because the universe is limitless. The more we step into our true power and authenticity and our sovereignty, 
the less likely we are to allow people to pull the wool over our heads or the wool over our um our eyes the more we are tapping into our third eye and able to see beyond the veil and connect with the most high the soul mastery class here is reminding us that the universe has our back and a lot of times when we are worried we are holding on to things and won't surrender to them it's because we don't believe that we are at one with the universe and that god loves us and that we are protected so it says, be a living expression of the universal life force by allowing it to flow through you to inspire and illuminate the love in you and all. Broaden your mind beyond the mass agreements that form three-dimensional reality and shake free any fears and limitations that are holding you away from your truth. I'm not going to read the rest of the um, meditation. But it, it encourages you to do 15 minutes of exercise every day for a week. Move more and you will overthink less. Exercise is a great way to get your mind off of things and stop stewing over things because it gets that stagnant energy moving again. It says do something that takes you out of your comfort zone. Go to the movies, a restaurant, or a musical by yourself skydive or trek up a mountain facing your fears stops them controlling you this message is definitely speaking to me here lately uh i may go do something on my own in the daytime every now and then i kind of got a little routine going but i used to would like go to plays concerts and all of that by myself now honestly i think uh being in the pandemic and, and being in the house so much has kind of gotten me more conditioned to be in the house and enjoy my me time and then when I do get out to um be more extroverted and enjoy the company of others but one thing I've got to start doing more is like taking myself out on a nighttime date like I'll go to a restaurant and eat by myself during the daytime but at the at night I'm in the house <laughs> I'm in the house or I may every now and then get out with some of my people but I've got to start doing like um movies and restaurants and stuff like that um at night by myself more like I used to uh because I did enjoy it but it's something I've just grown out of the habit of doing and then it says it suggests to spend the first five minutes on waking feeling joyous calm and see how far you can take this into your day be mindful of what you do as soon as you wake up because is that that is one of the most important times to tap in with yourself, to dedicate yourself to yourself, to the God in you. Dedicate your day to the God in you, the God above you and the God around you. You know what I'm saying? You want to devote your day. If you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is grab your phone and go to Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Facebook, then that's you inviting external things in to uh to lead your day to to di dictate your day you want to just take a few minutes first of all to say thank you for waking up because that is a blessed opportunity that's not guaranteed to you so you don't want to take that for granted but you also want to spend some time being intimate with yourself and being intimate with god before you step out into this world because one thing for certain and two things for sure you don't know what the hell the day gonna throw at you that day that um, Dolph passed, I definitely didn't see that one coming. Now, granted, I had been seeing 555 like crazy. So I knew something was brewing. But even though I had had a dream a year ago and certain things was happening leading up to I didn't see that one coming. And it was important that I had taken time out to get centered that day so to be honest with you when i saw it i grabbed my chest and i was hurt but i didn't have an outward expression of my emotion i think i was just angry and damn near confused at the time it wasn't until the next day that i was overcome uh with emotion and that next day i did not do any kind of devotion i woke up immediately thought about the fact that he he was gone and was in a funk and so it's just so important that we are intentional about how we are spending our time. I am just curious to see what archetypes are supporting this message of alignment. 
being one with the universe, speaking truth, and being in divine masculine energy have to say. So let's see. I wouldn't be surprised if some divine masculine um, archetype comes forth. And what I'm going to do is instead of taking the shadow attributes to the card, because these cards are all over the place and I don't feel like turning them all upright, I'm going to... Uh, we're going to take the message from the light attribute of the archetype cards, regardless of how they land. Let's clarify this message for the collective. Mm. Mm. Somebody's taking a risk. The gambler. Willing to follow intuition even when others doubt you. You got to be willing to accept the fact that you are the universe and to get in alignment with what it is that you want. And that requires taking a risk sometimes. Everybody ain't going to be cheerleading for what it is that you want. You're going to have some naysayers around you saying, no, nah, bro, I don't think you should do that. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think you, that's going to succeed. But if you know... That God has led you to do it, you better do it anyway. You gonna what you gonna you gonna follow what they say or what God say? Trust. It's people out here. God is speaking clearly to them about their calling. God is speaking clearly to them about their next move, and yet they listen to their they next door neighbor. They listen to Pookie them. Pookie them is gonna lead your ass clean astray. Okay. So the card on the top of the deck. The beggar. In its light attribute, the beggar confronts empowerment at the level of physical survival, awakens the spiritual authority of humility, compassion, and self-esteem. The beggar, when in its light attribute, has the confidence to know that because they are one with the universe, they will always be provided for. And it's not a matter of pride being the reason why they don't ask for what they need. But they trust that they're going to be provided for. They're humble about their approach. They're compassionate and they have the self-esteem needed to not depend on others without putting forth any effort to provide their own needs themselves. That is that divine masculine energy. Because the divine masculine provides, is not prideful and stuck in their ego and is compassionate. Bottom of the deck. The student, again, humility, having the humility to learn, not having to feel like you're, you know it all. It says humility and devotion to knowledge, openness to lifelong learning. So I hope that this message found you all well. If it did not find you well, I hope that it leaves you well. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop down in the description box. My um, email information is provided uh if you're interested in booking a personal reading with me i suggest that you do so i've been talking about uh shutting down my books for the month of december so that i can use this time for rest and recreation so i can kind of revitalize and prepare uh for the new year uh but you can book for november and for january uh, my prices and all of the information is on my website at www.turquoisemajesty.com. Also, uh, adornments by Turquoise Majesty are available on my website for purchase. Some beautiful accessories um, available for you all to uh, assist with your creative expression of the divine. And I think that is all. Should you feel led, don't forget to like subscribe share the content with someone who you think may find it helpful or maybe even entertaining even though i am not here to entertain nobody's children but if that's the case so be it peace